I like Celeste, I think I'm pretty good at it, so I decided to play the Celeste D-Sides. The D-Sides are a fan-made mod for the base Celeste game, which is a game where you climb up a mountain by climbing, jumping, and dashing your way up. However, the D-Sides are an incredibly hard remixed version of the base game, which takes a lot of skill to beat. And I decided to play it because I don't value my sanity enough, clearly. We have seven chapters to be, each having their own unique gimmicks and challenges. And going in, I seriously did not expect this to be that bad. But yeah, I think the title explains itself. Chapter one is basically the appetizer chapter, a refresher on Celeste, as well as slowly preparing me for future chapters. And the fact it nearly took me 10 minutes to beat the first room definitely doesn't show a sign of the impending disaster that's waiting for me later. As for the ending of chapter one, I'll let past me take over for this one. Okay, checkpoint. Oh, that's it. Purple heart, and I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, so much like Super Mario World ROM hacks, this game likes to troll you at the end instead of giving you the win fair and square. After a brief confusion, I realized that you have to dash to the left as you still fall a little bit before the winning animation. Oh yeah, that's how all chapters end, by the way. You collect a heart. All in all, chapter one wasn't too bad. It took me little under an hour to beat the whole thing and 468 deaths. Chapter two is the first chapter where I had to learn an entirely new trick that I had never done before in this game. As you can see, it took me a while to get the hang of it, but eventually I figured it out. If there's one thing that I noticed about this chapter is that it is chock full of spikes. Every corner around this place is full of spikes, no matter where you look. And then I proceeded to get stuck on the final screen for literally a half an hour, which is funny because if I hadn't done that, it would have taken me less time to beat this chapter than the last one, as well as less deaths. Chapter 3 was a massive difficulty jump. This chapter is all about timing with these little fuzzy things. If you're not good at timing, well... But yeah, this level had it all. Cramped spaces, open spaces, quick sections, and minesweeper? What? These were some of the hardest rooms I had ever played in Celeste, and I knew this was not a good sign, considering I was only on chapter 3 of 7. But still, I continued onward. Room after room after room after room after... Oh, yeah, then my stream died. And then I got it back up and running again, and then room after room... Ah, uh, yeah, it died again. At that point, I considered it a good stopping point for the day. You know, I would love to tell you that when I came back to this, that it went very, very smoothly. But I would be lying. It took another hour. Oh yeah, also I moved my camera over here so you can see the left side of the screen more. So that's nice. In the end, it took just over four hours to beat chapter three. And as for the deaths... Look how many deaths it took. Only 1,030... <laughs> I couldn't have done that if I tried! Yeah, I had the exact amount of deaths of Leet. Yeah, there's nothing more to that. Besides Chapter 4 having the chillest vibes imaginable, I'll just let past me explain what the whole deal with Chapter 4 is. Okay, when I entered this room I thought there was gonna be wind, and I'm glad there isn't, but now I just remember that wind is a feature in Chapter 4, so there's undoubtedly going to be some wind parts of this, and I'm not looking forward to that. So... Oh my god, I can't see! My bitrate is probably getting f destroyed right now. What the hell is this? Ah! And I seriously thought that would be the end of it. Okay, okay. Alright, there's still a lot on... Oh, no, god damn! And of course it works in the rule of threes. Okay, please, can we be... No, why is there more? <laughs> This is even worse! Yeah, so I would love to be able to show you more of this chapter, but the majority of this chapter is comprised of wind. Although most of it isn't the blinding wind screens like just now, but you know, wind is still annoying. However, I can show you the ending. Nice. You fuck- Yeah, it trolled me again. Despite all of these factors, this was actually a step down in difficulty from chapter 3, only taking about an hour and 45 minutes instead of the four hours that chapter 3 did. Chapter 5's best quote-unquote strength is getting you entirely lost. This was by far the most confusing chapter of all of them. Not to mention this is the only chapter that has puzzles. There are a few new things introduced in this level, but the main hard thing is this crystal holding our best boy Theo. He's relevant in the actual game, but not in the mod. There's a lot of timing sections as well as just general hard gameplay as you have to keep them alive and you have to bring them to the end of each room. All of that is hard in its own right, but this chapter is just hard in general. This specific room here where you have to continually dash left and right was one of my favorites and something that I was not expecting to see at all in this mod. And the ending for this one is a bit different. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this time I ended up trolling myself, so good morale boost, I would say. 
All in all, this chapter wasn't the worst thing in the world, despite what I've said. It still wasn't as hard as chapter 3, but it was harder than chapter 4. Something interesting though is, even though I took around 40 minutes longer, I only took 13 more deaths than chapter 4. Chapter 6 was easily the hardest and longest chapter I'd encountered thus far. And it immediately surprised me with something at the start. You are kind of a microwave. Oh god, I can fall back down? This is a getting over it level? Oh no. <laughs> the truth has just been revealed to me and I do not like it. Yeah, so in the first five or so screens, this chapter takes a different approach and turns the game into getting over it, which basically means that you can lose your progress and fall back down instead of just progressing screen by screen. Although fortunately, it does only last a few screens. And immediately after, I'm introduced to one of the mechanics I am probably the worst at in this entire game. The Golden Feather. The Golden Feather temporarily changes you into this golden trail where your movement is completely free, but you're also extremely fast. Although navigating small spiky corridors like this are a nightmare. I spent 10 minutes on this room alone, and there were many more rooms just like this. And in general, the rooms here were just taking me so much longer than previous chapters. And then we get to the section of this level that I like to call the dropper screens. And if you thought chapter 2 had a lot of spikes, then welcome to chapter 6. These rooms would consist of just continually dropping, dodging ludicrous amount of spikes. And of course, some of these screens combined it with the golden feather. One of these dropper screens took me around 35 minutes just in and of itself. And that's only the first half of the level. The second half of this level involves a chase with your darker self. Again, it's another thing that makes sense in the main game, but not in this mod. But this mod did something I did not expect at the beginning of this chase sequence. Oh. We are now in Heia's own... I don't even know how to do this. Why does the music... Oh god, okay. I want to beat this screen as soon as possible so I don't have to keep hearing the music start. Hey! Yeah, so I don't know why, but they programmed it so that the music would restart at the very beginning of this first screen. But in preceding screens, the music would loop as normal. Except that's not the only thing this mod changed about this chase. Whoa, 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 whoa over there! Yeah, they shoot a lot more projectiles now. Also, there was the survival section where you had to wait for these platforms to fall so that you could continue onward. Very cool section. A few screens after that, this happens. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, so in the normal game they shift from projectiles, which is not as fast, and a single laser. But this introduces three lasers at once. And then again, this happens later. Oh, the music's quieting. No- WHAT?! 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 Get out of here, dude! Why would you- Okay, no. There's like a spider web of lasers on me. What the fu- Yeah, so apparently this is a thing that can happen now. Power of mods, I guess. This section ends with basically a final boss room. We have to continually hit them over and over again until they leave. And then what I thought was the ending was actually just a fancy transition into the final section of this chapter. Where it basically turns into chapter 8, which is normally a bonus chapter. Where you head into the center of the mountain with lava and all sorts of fancy stuff but for some reason is making an appearance in Chapter 6. I don't know why. This last section of Chapter 6 has some really cool rooms though, like this one where you are on this bridge that's like forming and falling behind you, and this one with a massive wall that comes back and forth. And as always, the ending of a chapter has something up its sleeve. How many hits doth you require? Last one. You f Troll. Why does every level have to end for the troll at the heart? Yeah, so on the very last hit, it randomly sends you to the right when all the other hits sends you to the left after hitting them. After everything, it took me five and a half hours and 1,635 deaths to beat chapter six. Real quick, if you're enjoying this, you should hit the subscribe button to see more. And if you want to see this stuff live, you should go check out my Twitch in the description. All right. At this point, you may have been wondering what the deal is with the title, calling this a harrowing journey, despite the fact that I've been mostly positive. Well, welcome to the final chapter. This chapter is comprised of seven large sections, each one representing one of the past chapters, and then the last one being all new stuff. Each one of these is like three times more difficult than the chapter that's themed around. Luckily, every single one of these is only five screens, but still, these things are incredibly difficult. The very first screen looks like this. 
just to put it in perspective here, this screen is the final screen of the Chapter 7 Seaside from the original game, one of the hardest screens in the entire main game. And this is the very first screen of the D-side. So yeah, that's what we're working with. One more thing is that because I did this over the course of multiple streams, my camera location will vary because I am incredibly inconsistent. Like I said, these screens are incredibly difficult, but these are the easiest of the entire chapter, and if I spent time on all five of them, then we would be here all day. So I'll just summarize and say, these were extremely hard, just like everything else. And in total, these five screens took me an hour alone. The chapter one theme section went much the same way. Instead this time, instead of being raw difficulty, it was more on the side of me not learning what I was supposed to be doing in certain rooms. But like I said, it went almost exactly the same, taking yet another hour. The chapter two theme section was by far the tightest section, which is honestly on theme with chapter two. Millions and millions of spikes, as always. Not really sure what else I can say, although room four was very interesting with just how tight and fast and how easy it is to die in this room. But it is getting harder. This section took me about an hour and a half, which is probably not a good sign. I was initially quite scared going into the chapter three theme section, as chapter three was originally one of the hardest D-sides I played throughout all of this. And it's not like my fears were right, but they weren't really wrong either. This was about the exact same difficulty as the chapter two section which was yet another hour and a half. But the rooms were getting harder and harder to learn, and longer as well. Chapter 4 begins with me finally remembering that this game has an in-game timer that shows my total time throughout all of the D-sides, which, yeah, I don't know why it took me this long to turn on. But anyways, because we're back in Chapter 4, of course, the wind returns, which made this section harder than all the others so far. This section was a mix between hard open wind rooms with snowballs and these cramped rooms with these moving platforms that you can choose which direction to go. This room specifically took me an hour just because of how long it was and how long it took for me to figure out how to time these things and move both of them so that neither of them would stop moving. It was a very long process. But if I'm ever going to beat this thing, I gotta keep moving. In total, that took me about two and a half hours to do that section. We have one last section before the final stretch. And I was really hoping it would be easier than the last section, but it very much was not. The first room took me two hours to beat one room. Not only is this room incredibly challenging, but it has some unique mechanics that I haven't done before. All to do with getting momentum from these moving blocks that activate when you dash, especially this last jump. I lost a lot of time on this one trick. The three rooms in the middle weren't that bad. I mean, they still took around an hour, but not two hours on one room. The last room was probably the longest room so far, and because of that, it also took another hour to do this one. But I'm just still baffled on how long the screen is, and how many times I thought I was at the end, but in reality, I was not. In total, this section took me four hours to do. And after all of that, we finally arrive. The final section. The final section is made up of 25 checkpoints, not rooms because the checkpoints can be within rooms. These checkpoints start from 25 counting down to 1. Anyways, we start with wind that's aiming down which makes getting up a lot harder, which is pretty bad considering we're trying to get up. So we're forced to do a lot more wall jumps than normal because it's one of the few moves that we have left that doesn't require energy or a dash. This continues until checkpoint 20, which at the time I was kind of terrified how fast I was going through these, because I knew it was just building up to the hardest stuff I've ever encountered in this game. Checkpoint 20 definitely picks up the pace. The wind now aiming up gives us a floaty effect, so we can fall longer and jump higher. Checkpoint 19 wasn't too bad, it was more of the same stuff, probably just preparing me for what's to come yet again. Checkpoint 18 was also more of the same stuff, but it was longer and more difficult, dashing through all of these crystals. Checkpoint 17 was tough. You pretty much have to use no dashes throughout all of it and maintain your energy and do perfect wall jumps on these tiny little spots just to make it up with your one dash remaining to get up. Checkpoint 16 wasn't much except for having to line up this perfect jump here. Checkpoint 15 really abuses the floaty physics. You gotta time your dashes perfectly to land on these clouds or you are probably landing in a crystal. Chapter 14 was rough because this one has a golden feather. Actually, it has multiple. And I think we've gone over that I'm not the greatest with those. This section was also harkening back to chapter 6 with these falling sections. Checkpoint 13 was much the same way, also having a golden feather, but also having really tight dashes through these crystals. And checkpoint 12 keeps up that trend of tight dashes with crystals everywhere around you at all times. Checkpoint 11 was this long, tight corridor of crystals with clouds to maintain your dashes. Checkpoint 10 is probably the strangest one. You have to climb on these blocks to make them fall and just barely have enough energy. And then you have to do 
through these extremely tight dashes through this mini crystal cavern. Checkpoint 9 was awful. It was short, but you had to do one trick that was obscenely hard for me. You have to barely climb on this rock to make it start falling, but not do a normal wall jump because then you won't be able to make it back to it. You have to do a tiny little wall jump to jump again on it while it's falling to make it up to this spot. And this took me a while to learn. Checkpoint 8 really reminds me of like a Mario Kaizo level, having this big open area with a bunch of spikes to dodge, and just barely getting your dashes back by immediately jumping on these clouds. Checkpoint 7 was more of the same cloud tech, but it was much longer and a lot harder. Checkpoint 6 was all about climbing using the least amount of energy so that you can barely climb and wall jump your way up to checkpoint 5. By now we've reached the final 5 checkpoints and I am utterly terrified. Although my fears weren't really being responded to me by the game, because Checkpoint 5 was extremely easy. Checkpoint 4 was more golden feathers! Whoa! It made this one take a while. And I think at this point I should tell you why this is a harrowing journey. Because I have been trying the D-sides for about 3 months now, and I really wanted to fish finish them and get them out of the way. So in one stream I said I would do the Chapter 5 section, and this full final section. This was a mistake. By the time I reached Checkpoint 3, I was already 7.5 hours into the stream, and it was about 1.15 in the morning. But I thought, hey, it's only 3 more checkpoints. Can't be that bad, right? Well... Checkpoint 3 begins with using one of each mechanic from the previous chapters, which is a cool callback. And then we have Checkpoint 2. Checkpoint 2 was the culmination of pretty much everything I had been learning at this point. How to dash exactly where you want to go, how to position yourself to not die by any crystal, how to do every single trick. Yeah, it was definitely the hardest room in the entire game. So I am just going to let this play out and talk over it. This entire screen is a big callback to the final screen of the seaside of Chapter 7 from the original game, with this huge chain of springs because there was something very similar in the seaside. And then having the cloud tech and just... Th there was so much here, which is exactly why I'm showing you this, but it was insane. And of course, the very tight dashing section near the end here got me killed so many times. And then not to mention this part, this part right here, because it was so far in, I couldn't practice it. I, it was so hard to learn how to maintain my energy and do all the correct jumps in a quick succession because if you grab onto any of these one tile blocks, they fall, and if you don't have enough energy and then you just fall, it was so bad. But finally, on one attempt, I made a breakthrough. Oh, oh my f god! The, I, I, the bridge, I didn't know the bridge was there. I thought it was gonna land right on those spikes. Oh my god. Wait, the music cut out. Was that the final, was that actually the end? And this is like, just like the aftermath? And this isn't actually that bad? Oh my god. No way. No way, dude. Nope, it's not done. <laughs> Why would it be done? Of course not. I just... <laughs> I mean, you can still hear the music. It's back there in the in the background. We're going up. We're keep. We're still going up. I'm trying to make sure I'm lining this up correctly. Am I here? Is this it? Did I do it? Wait, it's not over. No. No. Ah! I can't fucking believe this. How dare you make me think that I was done? I was looking forward to sleeping, I was considering just not even playing anymore. Absolutely ridiculous. And I was going to stop, but I just wanted to see, because I knew this was the final screen. Because the final screens throughout all the other chapters ended with these little blinking blocks. So I just wanted to scout it out, see how bad it would be. Maybe I could do it. Even if it was rapidly approaching 3 in the morning. After scouting it out, I decided I was going to try and beat it, after taking a quick break. This was yet again another mistake. I was desperate. I was so desperate to beat this. I just wanted to go to sleep. 
I wanted it to be done. But this room is so long. It just doesn't end. Every time I finally learn how to do a section, it just throws another at me. After an hour goes by, I am just losing all hope. It is four in the morning at this point, and I really want to give up, but I keep on trying. After a while, I make it here. An incredibly hard to time section. But after a lot of trial and error, which you actually can make errors here if you're careful, you can fall back down on the ground and try again. I learned that you can actually mostly cheese it if you just do some very quick climb hops. I don't know what they're called. And after that, I make it the final screen. The heart waits in the middle. And I am utterly terrified. Unfortunately, my camera blocks it, but I start at the bottom left. I know what I have to do. So I do up jump and then up and right jump, bounce off the heart, and then go to the right, dash left, and then dash up. I want to go right as much as I can, because if, if, I, if I dash up, I might hit the crystal right above the heart. Although, actually, wait. I'm gonna try, okay. I'm gonna try something. It may result in my death. <laughs> Terrified. It, it looked like it would work. I was gonna go around, but I thought that ha it looked like that had more room. <sighs> Absolutely devastating. Luckily, it only takes me a few more minutes to get back up there. All right. <sighs> Lucky number two. I'm gonna actually try and I'm gonna bounce. Make sure I go right. I need to make sure I go right enough because I'm just gonna dash into the crystal. Yes, let's fuck. I can't get loud. It's fuck five in the morning. <laughs> I love. That's what I feel right now. I fucking did it. Jesus Christ. I like lagged. Oh my god. Twenty-seven hundred deaths. Nope. <laughs> oh, how foolish of me to think that twenty-seven hundred was my death counter. No, it was literally twice that much. Okay, so I should probably get this out of the way. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I have no desire to do chapter eight or chapter nine. D sides. I'm perfectly content beating chapter 7. Chapter 7 is the normal end to Celeste, and then chapter 8 and 9 are bonus chapters. And what a journey it really was, honestly. It may have been a harrowing journey, but I'm glad I did this. It felt very accomplishing to finally beat that final room, even if it was at 5 in the morning. In total, it took me 6.5 hours to beat those final 25 checkpoints. I had an 11 hour and 20 minute stream, 18 hours to beat all of chapter 7, and a combined 34 hours to beat all of the main 7 D sides. And yeah, what I said is still mostly true. I don't have any plans to do the chapter 8 and 9 D-sides, but maybe I could be convinced to do them. Maybe. Big maybe. But yeah, that's why the D-sides are a harrowing journey. See you next time.